In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the navigational aid called VOR. VOR is short for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio Range, which is a mouthful. As you learned in ground school, VORs are radio aids to navigation. To use the VOR, you tune the frequency for the VOR you want to use in the VHF nav radio and listen to the Morse code identifier. Once you have verified you have the correct station tuned, the VOR indicator will tell you where the airplane is relative to the VOR station. We're going to use the Payne Airport VOR today. It's located in Everett, Washington. That's where they build the 747s, you know. I've already tuned the radio and identified the VOR station for you. You can learn how to do that in the ground school material. We're about six miles south of the Payne VOR station. How do I know I'm six miles away? Because the Payne VOR also has DME. DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. The name kind of says it all, doesn't it? How it works is best described as magic, and what it does is even better. It will tell us our distance from the VOR, our ground speed, and how long it will take us to get there. The DME indicator is on the upper right-hand corner of the instrument panel. It's the panel with three red numbers and a switch marked N1 and N2. The switch allows us to measure our distance from either NAV Radio 1 or NAV Radio 2. The first number is the distance to the station. The second is our ground speed relative to the station. And the third is the time it would take us to get there. Back to the VOR indicator. We want to continue northbound on the 360 degree course inbound to the station. So I'll set VOR number one to 360. As we pass over the station, we'll continue north for 3 DME and then head west a bit. Then we'll turn south to intercept the 090 degree course to the Payne VOR. This will head us back eastbound to the VOR station. On the VOR1 indicator, notice 360 is set at the top center and the two from indicator points up. This indicates the direction to the VOR station. I'm giving you control of the airplane. Ready? Maintain an altitude of 4,000 feet. Where necessary, make small corrections to keep the vertical needle centered in the VOR1 indicator to stay on course. Turn left more. Remember to fly towards the needle to get it to center. The needle gets more sensitive as we get closer to the station, so make small corrections. Slow down. After we cross the VOR, continue outbound on the 360 degree course from the station. Turn left more. Now that we've passed the station, notice that the indicator still reads 360, but the triangle in the bottom center now points down. This means we're heading outbound from the station on the 360 degree course.
turn left more. Turn left more. I want you to turn west now. Maintain 4,000 feet. You're too low. Climb. Slow down. We'll fly in this heading of 270 for a minute or so. Just reset VOR1 to show an inbound course of 090 degrees. This will be our final course as we head back to the Payne VOR station. to head south. Turn left heading 180 and maintain 4,000 feet. Use 20 degrees of bank in the turn. Fly this way for another minute or so until we close in on the 090 degree course. All right, we're going to intercept the course. We'll approach it from an angle that makes it easier to intercept. Make a 30 degree bank turn to the southeast to a heading of 135 degrees. Look for needle movement as we approach the course.
vehicle starts moving toward the center, that's your cue to start turning toward a heading of 090 degrees. This will allow us to track the 090 degree course to the station. Remember, make small corrections of 15 to 30 degrees to center the needle and keep it centered. Since that's not going well, I'm going to end this lesson now. I'd like to suggest that you take this lesson again so we can practice these important piloting skills some more.